Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monster's Den. Today, it's all about finishing up this whole aliens and predators and alien versus predators. That's uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So two weeks ago, we ranked the alien franchise. Last week, we ranked the predator franchise. And today, we're going to talk about the two alien versus predator films. One came out in 2004. One came out in 2008, right? 2007. Seven. Three years yeah. apart. Um, you know, a lot of... A lot of controversy about these films. Uh, most folks seem to think both of these are pretty bad and missed opportunities. So we're going to kind of dissect each one of them and maybe talk a little bit about what we may have done differently to make these better because uh, we are all big fans of both franchises, and I think we were all pretty excited to see them come together and it was a little on the disappointing side to say the least. So we've got in the house today, we've got Jamie Laszlo, we've got Chris Allo and Craig Kaminsky. So greetings, gentlemen. Cheers. Hello. Yeah, this is uh, the kind of the offshoot films that should have been great. And yeah, yeah. Some fun moments, but ultimately, I think a huge missed opportunity on both. I don't think it's all bad. Yeah. I would I would agree with you. Did everybody yeah. rewatch these recently? I yeah, did. Over, over yes. the past both of them. And, and the I watched days. Requiem for the first time last night. Let me oh. just say, oh, wow. I, I've never seen it. I put it on last night. You still I still don't think I've still ever seen it. <laughs> you still haven't seen it because it's I so haven't fucking seen dark. It still. Yeah. Ridiculous. All right, we'll get to that one in a minute. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Alien vs. Predator uh, 2004. So I, I've got them both on this uh, 211 Blu ray set. You got the same one? Yeah, this, you can't beat this. It's like, what was Four bucks I found it for. Yeah, it was cheap. It was cheap. Um, so basically, here we have the the predators. Was it is this Antarctica, right? Or was this Alaska? I don't think Antarctica, yeah. right? Antarctica. It's Antarctica. Antarctica. So it's basically island, there's island. this yeah. what's that? Yeah, there's this kind of tunnel that goes under the all the way under the ice. And basically the predators have been going down there in secret. Uh, and they've every kind of every like, hundred years, yeah. For yeah. hundreds and hundreds of years. So this has been going on a 30 up. degree angle. Yes, exactly. Okay. And they basically got like a bunch of alien down there and they do this kind of like a uh, ritual thing every so often where they kind of hunt the aliens that they have trapped down there. And of course we've got people up on the surface who are seeing these disturbances all the way under the ice and they want to go check it out. Right. So of course they're able to get down there. So that's the way it always goes. And uh, we've got, you know, Lance Henriksen shows up in this one. We got uh, Sanaa Lathan and uh, all and sorts of other. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the plot doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. And also when you look at like the history of the two film franchises and the way they've all kind of happened, you watch this film and you're like, well, why did, why all of a sudden now we have aliens that have been here on earth for God knows how long. Well, and it's, it's not canon. I, I, I was, that's what I was going to say. I mean, to my biggest problem with the alien versus predator movies is they totally negate the whole purpose of the, of the four alien films with Sigourney Weaver. The whole, the whole point of those movies is, Oh my God, we can't let the aliens get to earth right but now you're telling us the fucking aliens have, we know the predators have been here but now you're telling us the fucking aliens have been here the whole time it's like dude come on yeah i view it as a marvel what if you yeah. know that's how i see it it's based off the comic books more than it is the film franchise i've never read the comics so i don't know how much the comics are based off the film franchise so. So I don't know. Have you guys read the comics? Yeah, I, I, had a, I, I had a graphic novel of the, or I still do, of the initial Alien versus Predator. It's like, I don't know, five or six issues in one, in one book. Right. And there are some elements from the movie that are in the comic with the... Uh, the uh, main the main uh, female character that she uh, helps out the predator and she gets, she gets marked scarred, by yeah. him and I, I, that's uh, if I remember correctly at the end I mean she's a team the predator doesn't die and she's like a team with him and they're besties you know yeah. so uh, BFFs as the yeah. kids say today yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, yeah it I took mean, some elements from the. And from it's the even film. worse in the second film. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. But basically, these films are taken like taking place in modern day. While as we know, the whole Alien franchise is many many years in the future, it's right? So of course, too. yeah, uh, you know, if all this was right. made sense, obviously, what they saw out in space, they shouldn't have been surprised about, right? right. Well, right. right. Why, why would whale, the Whale and Utani Corporation, why would they have such a hard on to catch the fucking xenomorph in, you know, 2300, when in 2000, we've already got them under the fucking ice caps. I mean, yeah. we, we see in this fucking movie, we have a, there's a giant alien queen who can shit out baby eggs like crazy, and she's yeah. frozen in the water. So, I mean, it, it does yeah. totally, and, and if you want, you could think like Jamie that it's a what if, but I mean, there, there absolutely are connections. They, this is not a what if scenario. They were tying this in to the existing franchise. That's why Lance Henriksen is back as Bishop. Sorry, it Rich Catino. I, I know you don't. I know you don't get it, but you know he, he's I back as Bishop. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it. I think they meant to make it canon when they first made it, but as the years gone on, they're like, no, it's not. It's not. Well, well I mean, maybe if it would have done well, it, it did actually do uh, decent business. It, it did, uh, at, it did at, okay. at the time. But I think it, to me, it was, I mean, re watching it for the first time in many years. For, the first thing I saw was like, oh, shit, that's right. This one's PG 13. Yes. Every single, every single other one was R. The kids are to really make it PG 13. You can tell so, they try oh, real yeah. hard. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, they kind of tried to make, um, uh, what's her name? Sanaa La- Lathan. I'm, She's I'm, cute, I'm, whatever I'm, the fuck I'm, butch- I'm butchering yeah. it, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But they, yeah. they kind of try to make her into a tough Sigourney Weaver type, but yeah. not really, you know. And my the, the thing I would just, I was really pissed off was, and I'm sure you guys too, the incessant need to make us a tie that, it, that you know, that the the one can't beat the other one. When it was it's so obvious that they make it look like the, the predator is supposed to be the good guy, even though he's killing humans and the aliens are just animals. But yeah, but yet at the, you know, at the end of both movies, it's like, it's a tie, you know, nobody, nobody can win. And it's like, no, yeah, the two dominant ones are always going to be locked in a mortal combat. And they're yeah. both going to mortally wound each other. Right. Or you're I watching saw the it. predator as a lesser of two evils yeah. and maybe or, can be right. reasons reasoned with a little bit. Right. Or I, or I remember. See, I saw the first the first one in the in the theater. Second one, I did not. But the first first one, I remember. It's like, yeah, you know, they kill the first two predators in what, like, 10, 10, 20 minutes or so. I mean, and it's like it's just the one guy who's left, and it's and he doesn't have his cannon for the longest time, and yeah. it's like he's almost like half assed, helpless, and it's like, ah, come on, you know, you want to see this thing, you know killing every everything and it just you know it's hampered right from the beginning another another big problem too with with this movie this was made by by paul w anderson who had just made resident evil yeah which was a video game and he played a ton of video games leading up to this this movie plays like if it played like a video game in 2004 it plays like a video game now yeah it's like a choose your own adventure yeah Yeah. it is so (laughs) over fucking complicated with moving walls and traps and everything it's like guys the, yeah. we just want to see the monsters fight like just 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 give us that we I like don't have this whole oh, i thought that was so so annoying this i thought movie, it made the movie, movie feel bigger you know because i felt like they were in this huge maze um i well, don't they, they say how big the that thing. pyramid is supposed to be it was huge yeah. so it's yeah yeah it made it feel huge with the trap doors and everything i mean this is the thing i haven't seen it since it first came out what was it 2004 did we say yeah. so i went in I, I i bought this like late last year but i never watched it and i heard the second one was awful so i'm like i'll get to it eventually so i gave it three stars in my diary back in 2004 and when i learned we were going to do this i saw that i'm like i bet you that goes down a star maybe a half star <laughs> And I watched it. I'm like, I'm (laughs) as stupid as it is, I'm enjoying it. I'm keeping it at three stars. (laughs) There's things in this movie I like, right down to the hot black chick in it as the heroine. The special effects are are most, I mean, the practical effects effects are very good. The CGI is a little dodgy, but yeah, yeah. but I there's a there's a good amount of practical effects. I think the monsters look great. Monsters look great. And you know what? 
they're fighting each other a lot in this film. Which they are. I think and and you can see them when they yes. fight. Yes. yes. I, I didn't, There's I, not enough I didn't of it. remember. I didn't remember that the first one you you could see a little bit more with that. And and it's cool to see the aliens kind of uh team up and uh when they free the queen and everything that it's like, "Oh, you know what? If we kill this one guy here, we can uh, break break her shackles loose and everything." I mean, that was that's kind of cool. And at the very end when you have the big fight on the ice surface and everything, it ends a little goofy, you know, with the, yeah. you know falling into the ice and everything. But the fight itself is is kind of cool. And I thought I it was great wish... they did have the queen. I thought that yeah. was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And they, you know, they animated it, but it, it looked good, you know, when she was running around. Little, a little bit Jurassic Park-ish, but... Yeah, and you wanted that supporting cast to be uh, characters that you kind of gave a shit about, no, and, and they really don't. did not. You couldn't wait I for mean, them to die. They all yeah, suck. Uh, yeah, they they're, were no, that, that's a problem with both of these films. I mean... Yeah. I think more so in this. In this one, oh, I think everybody's right? just... They're just dicks. Well, the second one... Oh, put the second action. one, the characters yeah. in the oh. second one don't get... Yeah, I, I, like the, I like the blonde, and I, I thought the brothers were okay. Yeah. But those other but in in the first one, I think it has good scenes that are set up well here and there like when the guy's in the cocoon and the face hugger's coming out and he sees it and he shoots it and he's like ha 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 and, and then he stands back there. you yeah. see all the face huggers and then you see down the hallway him screaming and you see the 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 light from the gun shooting i'm like that's well done that's good so it's not all awful and the guy did event horizon he did some bad movies but i love her event horizon so he probably okay. always wanted to do an alien you know without by doing doubt. event horizon this is like yes um he did i don't know if his, money his idea to do pg-13 or not but you know like things are coming through the chest and you see it for a split second got to keep it pg-13 yeah. they drop one f-bomb and then they do a wow. half of a second f-bomb because you can't say two in a movie you can only have one yeah, it's like you get one, you get one f bomb, and it must be used as an adjective. Not yeah, a it verb. can't be used for the actual. Yeah, it must be an adjective, as in get me out of this fucking uh, place, not uh, fuck me gently. <laughs> and, and do we got to keep saying you are one ugly motherfucker? Do we have yeah. to keep reusing? Uh, we know already, right? Get to the chopper. But, you know, oh like, God, that I mean, don't. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I actually did say that. That was cringe. Yeah. Oh, that's not, the second you know, one. The second one they say get. Yeah, to the that's chopper. cringeworthy. But I saw like a making of uh, on this one, and you know. There was this whole huge thing where they did this it, they built these elaborate models for the for the boat icebreaker and i'm like they spent like a ton of money they were saying it was like one of the most expensive models ever built with all the little lights and i'm going why why we want to <laughs> see the fucking rubber monsters fight we don't what care do about you, the boat we don't give a fuck about the boat just let it the does monsters take a fight. while for them to fight in this the movie's boat. boring like it's oh, it's totally front loaded yeah, or we we recreate we recreated a 1904 whaling village. It's like I don't exactly. care. Who gives a fuck? I Let's see care. the monsters fight. <laughs> this would, yeah. you know, Pete. If this was King Kong versus Godzilla, would we give a shit if they built if they built this fancy boat or whatever the fuck? No, we, we want to see him fight. Yeah. It does have one of the best taglines ever. Yes. Whoever wins, we lose. Yeah, that is a great. That was a great. <laughs> <Yeah. line. laughs> And then, of course, you got to have the little twist at the end, right? Because, of course, yeah. one of the predators has got to get, you know. That was a good cliffhanger. Well, at least it led into the second one. They didn't. Right. Just, like, I mean, yeah. And there was total continuity between the first and second. Yeah, and when I watched the second one for the first time, I'm like, oh, it starts off with this? This ain't going to be that bad. And, and the then, first note I made while yeah. watching it, Not everything is darkness. dark. I'm like, I'll, I'll probably take, it's been five minutes or like it has been less than that when I made that note, like three minutes. I said, I bet you it lights up and I'll just, you know, backspace on that note. No, I put uh, exclamation points. Jamie, I, I told you last week, put your brightness up because it yeah. is I had no ideas like that. So dark. I mean, it was- But the trailer, will you do the trailer for the movie? You can see it. Yeah. But when you watch the actual movie, it's dark. So listen, who was the I, genius? I, who was the QC person who let that be released like that? No idea. I mean, listen, I saw it opening night, which was Christmas night, 2007 oh. here in New York. And it was fucking pitch black then. <laughs> and, and every version I've seen. Even in daylight. Was it yeah. in 3D? Was it in 3D with glass no, uh, no, to no, make no. it even more darker? No, no? it's just, it's just, it, it probably the darkest movie I have well, it's, and then it's, it's even part of the plot 100%. where it where it's uh you know it, it takes place at night and then there's a blackout on top right. of it so it's like and of course both both of them are dressed darkly or you're in a sewer or 
any under under in a swimming pool with no lights and oh yeah it, it's just every but right possible. before we even get there it just happens to be everything is even in broad daylight everything's fucking pitch black yeah yeah i mean when the guy when the guys are the, he, the kids in his bedroom he doesn't put the light on i mean like everything is dark for for no reason the first yeah. thing i had to do with this movie is dictionary requiem why is this called requiem yeah, I, the, same thing doesn't make any sense. Why? It doesn't make it makes any no sense. sense. <laughs> yeah. And really I, I really think cool. I, I really think they should have just called if they wanted just a one letter to differentiate it from the first. I think they should have called it Alien versus Predator Darkness. Yeah. Like at least that would have made more sense. Into the darkness. darkness. Yeah. Yeah. I don't fear know. Of, fear of the dark or something like that. You know, whatever. And it's really frustrating because, you know, you talked before, Chris, about how the first film is kind of slow for the first, like, hour, and then it really picks up steam. There's a lot of action in this film. Oh, but you, this one, you don't know what's going on. Ups the action, way ups the body count, the and gore. way ups the brutality. Gore. Oh, I God, mean, they, they're killing first, babies? First first yeah. few minutes, they chop off the father's arm. They kill the 12-year-old kid. They kill two pregnant women. They kill five or six kids from... Uh, from high school, it infers that they're going to kill the babies, and then they nuke a whole fucking town. They so, kill an unborn kid with the aliens inside the mother. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this is like cannibal corpse level brutality. And which the hot blonde chick inadvertently bites yes. it, which was which was good. That part I liked. Right. right good but bad. Because yeah, I, I, yeah. I okay. think when you do that kind of brutality, it has to be handled with a certain amount of, I don't know what the word I'm class. I don't know if I'm class is the right word, but whatever you need, this movie doesn't have it. So it only makes it makes it look, oh, really? Instead well, of, oh, wow, you know, the, you're going to go there. I mean, several times when I rewatched it, uh, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, I yelled out at the screen. I, I can't even fucking see anything. You know, stuff. it looks like there's good it. special effects, but yeah, you, or, you can't especially see it. when there's like, no uh, humans. You and see, it's just the, light you know, the predator reflecting. doing things with no dialogue. I'm like, yeah, what's yeah, he or, doing? Or you see the light reflecting off of the uh, pr predalien, as it's called. And it's like, oh, that, you know, you can kind of see a little bit. It's like, oh, that looks pretty cool. If you shown the light on it, I mean, yeah. the little bit that I see with the jaws and, you know, and everything, it looks pretty cool. But yeah. And, and again, more so, at least for me, characters that you just don't give a shit about, you know, yeah. especially the, the jerk guys that, uh, you know, want to beat up the the main kid, oh, you know, yeah. for no well, reason, me, or talking to the girl, you know, or whatever, you know, and uh, throwing his shit, keys, and we got to go know, find the keys. Yeah, I mean, and that's what the, you do. The, the main, the one, and again, the 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 woman uh, in this, they try to make her into a Sigourney Weaver because now, well, she's actually in the army. And so, you know, she's got training and skills and such. And, you know, she was one of the only people I recognized. She was in uh, 24, you know, with yeah. Kiefer Sutherland. She was, I didn't, uh... she was one of the, uh, the people that worked in the, uh, I think her name was Michelle, but, uh, but she, she was on that show. And most of the other people I, I didn't I recognize. But bad I bad writing that. and bad lighting. That's yeah, what yeah. I have for this movie. But I, of the two, I, I prefer the second one because it is gorier. much gorier, yeah. much more action packed. It's tighter, but it's fucking hard to see. It could it it could be a good movie if you rinsed it off and yeah. hung it out in the daylight. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, know I, uh, I particularly yeah. like there when we there's a little bit of the last stand where all the the townsfolk are in the center of town and the aliens are coming out of the woods and killing them. I think. It almost kind of reminds me of like a zombie movie. I think that, you know, again, Pete, I think you nailed it. Uh, a missed opportunity because yeah. I think both movies could have been much, much better. I mean, compare both of these to uh, Freddy vs. Jason. And I think that movie blows these two away. Mm -hmm. And that's not great. Don't get me wrong. No, it's not, but it's fun. It's not, but that one's a lot more fun than this. And you could see, you could fucking see everything. Yeah. yeah. But the cop, I don't understand the cop in the second one. You know, it's... What am I going to do? You know who I'm going to talk to about this? The ex-con that I just drove into town. Hey, ex-con, I need your help. <laughs> and then, you know, they're getting guns. And maybe I turned my brain off for 30 seconds. But I'm like, why is he teamed up with an ex-con, a pizza delivery kid, a chick from high school, two stoner dudes who die in a second? How did this motley crew get together? Yeah, what are they, what are they going to do against these yeah. monsters? Right? Right. Don't you have like a, a force like of police officers? 
I mean, the part that I think is completely ridiculous is when they, they get to the army, uh, the army tank and they call and the army and Colonel Peterson, you know, gets on the other line and he's like, OK, go to the go to the center of town and that's where we're going to do an airlift. And then two seconds later, you know, a truck of other of, of townsfolk pulls up and the, the sheriff talks to the townsfolk. And the sheriff's like, are you going to the, the airlift in the center of town? And the townspeople are like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, why the fuck did you hear? Because the sheriff just heard two seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and this, I, I, they I show love- the town in the beginning of the movie. It, it's obvious that there's got to be thousands of people that live in this town. Like, sure. yeah. well, there's like 100 people in that last final battle. Like, oh, so where the fuck is everybody else? Is everybody or else? Do, they, do they all just die in the nuke? That, that no. reminded me no. of uh, Outbreak, you know, the movie from the mid '90s with Dustin Hoffman, where they where they blow up the town, where they, where they want or, to blow up the town. Return Living Dead from 1985. I mean, yeah. you know, call call the tank, call the 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 number on the side of the tank. Oh, what's your coordinates? Okay, we'll take <laughs> care of that. There's a part I had to rewind in this in the movie Requiem because I couldn't believe he said what he said, the cop. So they are discussing what they do. We should go to the helicopter at the ho- or at the hospital. No, we got to go to the center of town where we were told to meet and get that. Up. And so you got the dilemma going. And uh, I love the one line. It, this is so poorly written, though, that the one chick says, the government doesn't lie to people. <laughs> and what? I'm sitting here going, was that meant to be a joke or yeah, not? That that was, and the that, fact that, that I don't true. know that yeah. it was a joke or not, that's bad execution. But what I had to rewind on is so they decide team a we are going to the hospital and team b with the cop so ex-con and his guys are going to the hospital the cop and his people are going to the middle of town and the cop says to the ex-con before they leave well i hope we're both wrong wait what (laughs) you hope you're both wrong (laughs) do you mean that your hope you're both wrong about the feeling of the other person's opinion I guess yeah. I don't know, <laughs> but I, I, I said maybe you yeah. said it didn't make right, and I heard wrong. I I had to laugh at the part where it was like, well, make sure you protect uh, someone, you know, the the, the woman, you know, and that, and it's uh, why well, fuck this women and children first stuff. It's like, well, she's the only one who knows how to fly the chopper, asshole. You know, unless you know <laughs> yeah. how to do it. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, why is that the only option? What if the fucking chopper's not there? Just stay in the tank and fucking drive out of town. Yeah. You, you you've Are got you- you've got a fucking tank. With you guys got guns, there's a 50 caliber rifle mounted to the top. Just fucking go, haul, haul ass out of there. Or of course you assume that she that because she's in the military, therefore anything military wise she knows how to do. It's like she you know, it's not like yeah. it's not like you go up to a scientist and say, well, you know, you're a scientist, so therefore you can split an atom, you know, or something, you know. So, uh, uh, but yeah, there's, there there are some funny parts like like Jamie said with the. Do you guys daughter. um <laughs> when when you used to rent stuff like from Blockbuster? and you get the trailers before the movie would you like see the trailers and judge the movie you're about to watch by the quality of the trailers before the movie no like if it was like a couple crap movies before the movie i was gonna watch i'm like oh this movie's gonna suck and that's what i did with this movie i watched the dv or the blu-ray and it was a trailer for jumper some young adult crappy thing and hitman some forgotten freaking video bad game. action film yeah. and i said oh that was a bad trailer so this yeah this movie's gonna suck <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean this i, I think this both films should have been better second film definitely a pretty stupid story and b complete darkness just doesn't yeah. make any sense i, I think uh, there were there was i think i could have i probably could have lived with the dumb storyline if you could actually see what was going on. Cause I, like I yeah. said, there's plenty of action in it, plenty of violence action. and it's, monster a, it's, a, it's a shorter movie. It's tighter. It's way gorier. You can give me the shittiest movie in the world or the most confusing movie in the world. Uh, if I have great characters that I care about, you can yeah. do anything around that. I always go back to true detective season one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to all the names in that show. So I got confused sometimes, very confused sometimes. But you know what? Those characters were so compelling yep. that I didn't care when I was confused because I had those characters. Plus the chicken there, best boobs ever. Oh, uh, Ale- best boobs Alexandria, on screen ever. What's her name? Alexandra Dario. Dar- 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 yeah. It's like known. 
fact that that's yeah. the best boob scene ever. Yeah, when that scene, I remember when that scene came on the first time I was, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll have it. to use yeah. my Mr. Skin subscription to look that yeah. up. Oh, no. Yeah. Google that. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, you, you will be amazed. <laughs> yeah. You'll be Googling yourself. <laughs> Keep it clean, yeah. Jamie. Keep it clean. Yeah, all right, so we know that uh, I think we can all agree that these were complete missed opportunities. There's some fun in them, yeah. uh, you know. Where they well, we're, we're not the only ones that feel that way because there was a planned third one, which yeah. did not happen. And I don't even understand the, the cliffhanger in the second one that much. They like bring the weapon to some woman, and she's. And I was, am I supposed to know who this woman is? Well, she's she's the Utani from Wayland Utani. Yeah. Okay. Bishop, right, was was the Wayland, right? Because in the in the uh, the original Alien series, the corporation that owns the uh, the ships that's sending Ripley and everybody in space is the uh, Wayland Utani Corporation. Ah, uh, so that's the slimmest connection there. He's like the founder or something like that, right? Yeah, that's all. Okay, and and you know, I assume that they're, you know the the plan was to do something technology wise with the weapon to possibly arm humans to the next level but if this was supposed to be kind of like a prequel type thing then they would have had all these weapons for well them. that's the other thing that negates everything yeah. if they if they have the fucking aliens they do, they don't need ripley to steal another alien 300 years later or 400 right. years later or to not even be able to know what they are it's like oh yeah, yeah we've, exactly we've seen this before yeah so. speaking of weapons can i go back to the first one again i love the alien head shield and the spear i think it's pretty badass I think it's, oh, yeah, cool. girl, I mean, yeah. it, you either reject or the you buy too, the think. fact that they're pals they at the end. But yeah, I like when they're good. running side by side and she's got that shield and the spear. I'm like, that's I'm pretty pretty bad. sure that's right out of the comic. Yeah, yeah. it looks like a frame right out of a comic. He does, he does the slash marks on her face with yeah. the yeah. alien yeah. blood. Yeah. 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 And uh, I like the I, I mean, they had so many years to put these films together. I'm like, well, why? What? Yeah. Come on, guys, you know? Well, they had the and, script and, in the comic books. Just put it yeah. on the film. But see, they well, never, for whatever reason, Jamie, they never want to do that. Never do that. I that. think it's a it's a rights issue, and that they do not want to acknowledge and or pay the original writers of the comics yeah. too it's much. Probably if, an if ego issue anything. too, we because they it's, it's never Pete. You know, we've seen how many comic book movies they are. You know, the overwhelming majority they they change so much they yeah. they never go with the the original story which pisses off all the you know long right things. the last fantastic four movie mm. oh my god let's yeah. <laughs> not even get started that's on another that. episode that is one that's one of the worst ever oh god yeah the one I from know. the 90s is better <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, my, that's, the, yeah. that's my favorite one, the Roger Corman one of all the uh -huh. Fantastic Fours. <laughs> I think that's the most close, the closest in to the story comic. and yeah, in and story and in tone. Looking, but yeah, yeah, you know, it was a it was a, a fucking weird family that you know got <laughs> all fucking weirded out at the same time, but did what they could to you know to you know fight Doctor Doom. Yeah, and they were they wasted a really cool looking. Silver Surfer in the second film, which yeah. I thought, I'd, and worst Doctor Doom. <laughs> Silver Surfer needs his own movie, man. Yeah. And, and, and Galactus was it was a cloud. Was a cloud. So, <laughs> How did we get here? Even, let's not. Yeah, let's yeah. not even. <laughs> let's not even go there. Terrible. Back to all right. Movies. So now that we've kind of talked about these two, uh, I want to turn it over to Chris for a couple minutes because uh, we do want to talk about like how maybe we could have done these differently. If, if we were in charge, like what would we have done here? How could we have made these films and the stories a little more convincing? So Chris, you wanna kind of kick us off with that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I definitely would have done, uh, I would have made it, you know, for talking the first movie, just make it simpler. You know, just just give me a scenario where the aliens and the, and the predators, and, and give me more than three predators. It's like, there's a rule in both of these movies. We can't get more than three predators. Make as many aliens as you want. But three predators is, is, is it's like a li like taking books out of the library. You, know, you gotta kill two of them off really quick. Yeah, right, you get, you get three, three predators out of the library, but you gotta kill two of them right away. Um, but I would make it simple. I mean, Jesus, just watch a King Kong versus Godzilla, you know, any of those Godzilla movies. And, you know, the predator just, and I would absolutely put it in space, make it cheap, 
Yes. And make it make them astronauts so they're not totally neither you know, of these should have been on Earth. No, all. they should they should have been in the future, not on Earth. So they're not walking around with thumbs up their asses. You know, just, they have some kind of laser guns. Keep, keep and just it, keep it simple. Keep it simple, like you said. Like uh, what what if just a an uh, deep space exploration crew comes upon a planet where the predators are on safari where they bring uh several a bunch of aliens with them and set them loose and go out and hunt them and the and the humans just happen to come upon this and say <laughs> oh crap yeah that's it yeah. i mean you, you've um, already got it built into the goddamn series Way Whale, and yutani corporation sends a crew out there because they think that the xenomorphs are on the planet but when they get there oh it's really the predators but they, they, that they're, they're there because they're there to hunt the xenomorphs, which we didn't see yet. Okay, there you go. There's your movie. The only way I would want them to be on Earth is if they made an alien um, sequel after Alien Resurrection. Which I was just going to say that because any aliens are there. Me, not the small town. Down. What's, middle, left, what's left town, on the planet? Yeah. Oh, look what we got here. Well, great hunt. point. Yes. And do it like those toys where the, where the aliens cross crossbred with animals from earth uh you know and things like that yeah. so uh, that would be something at least a little bit different that's yeah, built that, in right yeah and that's a that's a great point because that's the whole point of the sigourney weaver movies we can't let the aliens get to earth so if you do it after alien resurrection okay that's fine they're on earth i mean they get there eventually even in the dark horse comics they got there eventually yeah okay i think if they were going to go with small town america with requiem give me the police force small town police force has to deal with the situation and make the characters interesting you got the the sheriff you know is kind of a hero type guy make one of the guys an asshole you know make one of the guys the funny guy make it interesting you know until you know the the military gets there they have to deal with it but not not the pizza delivery guy who has a crush <laughs> on the girl and uh, no no you know in, in the we're stoned out of our minds. Give them weapons. They literally say that. Are you stoned? Yeah, give them guns. Yeah, those, those, those two guys, were they were totally Star Trek red shirts. I mean, cannon they oh, they were just there to get their heads blown off 30 seconds in. 30 seconds. Done. At the same time. We need more gore in this movie. Let's create a couple of doofus characters yeah. that we can blow up in, in a few minutes. Put Cheech and Chong in the back and blow their heads off. <laughs> Gore is not a necessity. One of my favorite horror movies is Poltergeist, and it's rated PG. You know, just make it good. You can make it good. Gore is always icing on the cake for me. Yeah, because all gore and nothing else doesn't work either, right? So it's like, right. I mean, make a good movie first. Yeah. Well, at least with these, though, you've already built in like how many different movies where the predator rips the spines out of people. Yeah, the alien, intestines you know, are falling out. You know, the aliens pop out of your chest. So you're got you you as the viewer go in knowing that I want to see some of that, and you really the, for the first movie you really right. don't. So I mean, it's. I bad. thought I would never get sick of an alien coming out of someone's chest. By the time I was on the second one of these, I'm like, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing it. Well, because they just rely on it so much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that prank, the the uh, the baby ward, though that was you know seeing uh, yeah, that was, that was that was uh, that, that was creepy for sure. And I tell you, again, I watched another short making of uh, of the second one, and they showed uh, I think that their names are, are Woodruff and White. They showed the guys in the suits, and they were slinking around, and it, it was you know everything was lit. They looked amazing. I mean, they looked so convincing it, with these guys in these rubber suits. I'm like, the fuck, you, you know, just shoot that and just put that on the, why did you make it so goddamn dark that it's impossible to see? And I'm going to steal a thought by a guy I, whose review I read last night. I forget who this was. I read a couple of them. He said the dude, the brother in, in Requiem did not have to be an ex-con. Nowhere in the story does it matter if he's an ex-con or not. Right. And the movie would have been better if he wasn't. It would have made more sense. I'm like, what a great point, dude. So. Yeah. yeah. 
I wonder if, if anybody at any point in time would, will even bother to spend the time or the money to somehow re-release this movie and brighten it up and just do whatever it needs to be to make it I more. I read fun. a comment where someone said they watched it on HBO and it was brighter as if HBO did something to it. I, I don't know. It's just a comment. You know what the comment section is like, so. That's some bizarre urban legend that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. There, there is there is a special Japanese cut that is actually. I was going to say, is that like brighter. famous monsters saying there's two different endings for the original King Kong versus Godzilla? <laughs> Maybe someday, right? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, I could only hope that someday they'll make a third film that'll actually do it right, but. They'd have I, to reboot. I, I, it. I doubt it. Uh, yeah, they'd yeah. have to reboot the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And listen, they're having enough enough uh, trouble rebooting the Alien franchise, and now they're <laughs> trying it again now with the Predator franchise. So yeah. you know what you know. they could do? They could make another Predator movie and kind of just slip an alien in it. You know, a little oh, bit. I mean, listen, they they certainly like they do with Marvel. The, you'll get an Ant Man movie, but they'll, they'll throw you a little Spider Man on the side, just something like, like that. Slip a finger in, nobody will notice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say two of the two of the uh, the best fan films I, I think of all time. Uh, well, I think the best fan film of all time uh, is uh, Batman Dead End, which I don't know if if you've guys seen lately, but I just rewatched it and it is fucking amazing. Fan the, made. Yeah, fan made, but uh, it's it's made uh, by a guy named uh, Sandy Cholera, I believe is his name, and he he directed it. And he did. He he was a Hollywood guy who wanted to get more work. So basically, he made a short film. I can't believe you guys haven't seen this. This is like the biggest fan film of all time. How long? On, how long is it? Eight minutes. It's only oh, on YouTube. Sure. It's on YouTube. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I, I probably bought three copies of it when I was a kid. Not a kid, you know. And, and my, when I was in my thirties uh, at, at Schiller Theater and stuff. What's but it called it's again? Batman Dead End on youtube you said yeah it's on youtube it's but it's it's got batman joker uh the alien and the predator and it's fucking amazing and it, it, to me it's the greatest cinematic representation of batman we've ever seen simple but brilliant trick to cool your in eight minutes seconds yeah batman dead end tired of the, and, stuff you yep, the other one I, I think is really good and it's like six yeah. minutes yeah I see, and it's, I, I see it's here yeah i'm yeah, sure it's, i'm sure it's inspired by batman dead end and th this guy uh, bat in the sun productions they have a whole channel where they do nothing but fan-made films but the one that they did that i rewatched last night which i i love is uh wolverine versus predator and it's the comic book wolverine and they fucking nailed the costume really is this and, the one where they have Wonder Woman fighting? Uh, yeah, they have they have everything. They have they'll have like Batman versus Deadpool. Wolverine. They'll have like they'll have like Batman versus Darth Vader, and then they'll film two different endings. One is Batman wins. One is Darth Vader wins. They're always like ten minutes. Yes, and there's always like and they're five bloody. Minutes. Yeah, they're usually fairly know. bloody, but they're fun. And I, I rewatched the Wolverine Predator last night, and I was like, wow, this is this is good. But man, Batman Dead End also incredible i mean uh, and that guy did get work because so many people saw it and it played at so many film fest and comic book fests all over the world people were like this is unbelievable i mean the, to me the greatest shot ever of, of batman in any you know live action um uh, form is batman jumps off a rooftop and lands on the ground and when he lands on the ground his cape is super fucking long like they always drew Batman in the comics. But of course, when he stands up, it, it goes back to normal length. But, you know, you you know, Pete, that was always the, especially in the seventies, you know, but it both, both shorts are, are fantastic. And um, yeah, I mean, technically now, um, Disney owns Alien, Predator, and, you know, all the Marvel stuff. So who knows, they could do some, I mean, it would be so easy to do send the x-men on a mission i mean the, the x-men you remember pete the brood the brood were the fucking alien brood person. was an alien knockoff in the comics yeah. you know no. send the x-men on a mission and they they get you know they they wind up the tussling with the aliens i mean it probably never happened five i tried to draw batman nice and they put That's... it on a plate and then you can see this here on his shoulders what that is is his I'm trying to make his cape look big 
and like flap over his shoulders. You know how it would like nice. up yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, and then I then I did made the cape there, and I forgot to make the jagged thing, so I kind of added them in the scallops. Well, yeah, not very good. Wow, and I thought I saved stuff. <laughs> I don't. I can't believe I still have this. Yeah, that's that like, makes two that's of us. Old. That's old. Wow. So what do you think, guys? Have we? Uh... Well, I was gonna say I, I didn't give you my predator pitch. Oh, yeah. oh yes, go ahead. Oh. So uh, I that mentioned very briefly in one of the episodes my my alien sequel or prequel rather, which is staring everybody in the face, as uh, is um, the story that we see very briefly where we see more of it in the director's cut of of Hadley's Hope, which was the colonists on the planet LV four two six, and and you know I say that Fox or somebody should have done a prequel where and all you ha- all you have to do is recast Newt. And uh, it's the whole story of the colonists setting up the colony and living on on the planet. And then one by one, they, some of the colonists disappear. And it's, it's all in the movie. They said how uh, they had a, a last stand and a big firefight with, with all the aliens and none of them made it out. Of course, we could change it so that one or two of the colonists made it out alive and they get separated from Newt. But, you know, that's neither here nor there but that's it's it's rogue it's rogue one all over again yeah, i was and, gonna say alien rogue one and to me they have the same exact story with predator and nobody's fucking touched it in 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 the first predator movie in the Jim beginning Harper. that's it that's it we see mm-hmm. they're in the they're in the jungle and Dutch Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, these were Jim Hopper's men. These were good men. I knew them. They were Green Berets. They're still it. alive. They, there's your fucking story. So <laughs> they get they get sent into the jungle, and it's you make the same exact movie as Predator. All different cast. Different cast. And okay, Hopper, whoever you have as Hopper, he gets out alive. You know, in case we wanted to do another one on the side. But or I mean, it's, they it's all right die there. and you have a cgi on a schwarzenegger come in for 30 seconds well the, the the end the end the very end of the movie would be them get get that shape on the phone yeah you they're... know or him oh. arriving or whatever but you know you would want to leave somebody alive just like they did with that shitty thing prequel just in case it's a hit and you want you don't want to paint yourself in a corner in case you wanted to do another one on the side but uh again the, these these two prequel ideas i, I can't i can't believe and, and, that the company's just sitting on it and nobody thought, oh, let's do this. Somebody will probably uh, instead say, you know what, how did all those uh, prisoners get to that moon in Alien 3? Let's, uh, let's explore how they got there and how they all became bald. Totally. You know, or they, they would, that would probably end up being made before a fine idea and, and or a common sense idea like, you know, the, the Jim Harper thing with uh, Predator. I mean, that's, yeah. that's just common sense 101 if you it's sitting there I mean, it's sitting there hell you could do the spanish girl when she yeah. talks about the you know it came to her they, village when it was hot there you go yeah. there's another one they yeah. make a whole other movie out of that god damn it yep something a predator story yeah you need to hire hire some of us to uh, help write this stuff i think i'm telling you it's not that hard no hollywood we're talking to you <laughs> I, I haven't seen a full preview of the Prey movie that's coming out in August. Uh, Which it's short, Hulu. Craig, yeah. it's, it's only like two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I, yeah. I have not I seen it. I think it's it. actually a teaser, technically. Do you guys oh. have high hopes seeing the teaser? Um, I don't know. I, I hope it's say, okay. I you want know. it to be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could, you know, it could. I mean, Could if we were shaking, if we were shaking a magic eight ball, I'd say, yeah. What, what was it? Uh, All doesn't doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they got bow and arrows, right? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they have primitive weapons because it takes place what in the 17, 16, 1700s, or Yeah. So yeah. they got to be careful with that. They got to make it work. <laughs> I'll put it to you this way: my expectations are low, but I hope to be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. The pizza. Head. The pizza. And head. if it sucks. I didn't expect much else. And it's not coming to the theater, which is always a, oh, oh. Yeah. Mm. Not that I know of. Could be coming. To the yeah, I, for, I forget. I, I forget what they're doing. Hulu. But, you know, know it's it, gonna costs, be on Hulu first. it costs a lot of money to get a, a movie in theaters. So they're saving. And not only that, not only the money to get it into theaters, but the advertising. 
So maybe they're hedging their bets and they're making it cheaper and they're saving money. So if they come up with an okay movie and they make some decent money off of running it on Hulu, fuck it. I don't have to yeah. see it in the theater as long as it's good. And they come to the streaming services so fast now. I mean, just, oh, yeah. just uh, I mean, uh, uh, coming up in the next few weeks, I think are movies or, or there are movies that were just in the theaters two, three months ago. I mean, I, I didn't even um, see that new Jurassic Park yet, and which I heard sucked. Oh, oh, but I, I, I already heard uh, it's coming. Uh, my buddy told me it's coming to something streaming in uh, August or September. Yeah, it was weird because it yeah. came out. Everybody was talking about people going to see it. It made pretty good money. But then like uh, Top Gun came out like two weeks later and you never heard another word about right. Jurassic Park. Word of mouth for Top Gun was great. A word of mouth for Jurassic Park was shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, well, I, I, I haven't seen either, so. And Doctor Strange is already on Disney Plus. Uh, right, yeah. right now. That came last week. Yeah, that's coming so, out four K. What this week or next week or is it already out? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's I soon. Don't know. Yeah. But I used to rush to the theater, got to see it, you know, in the surround sound and everything. Then when I got my own home stereo uh, theater yeah. set up, I'm like, eh, I'll just watch it here. Yeah, there's some movies I still like to see in the theaters. But yeah, 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 definitely some, but I don't rush as often. I should say. Right. And now during COVID, I mean, you know, it's like yeah. you go rush to a big packed theater full of screaming kids. And oh, I'm it. over that, Pete. I'm so over that. I'll go to a packed <laughs> we, we, we plan very I'm carefully. Going concerts. <laughs> I'm going October 1st, the oh. year thing. I don't I'm over that. <laughs> uh, all right. So there you have it, everybody. Alien versus Predator. Alien versus Predator Requiem. Uh, yeah, from us, I guess it's it's pretty much thumbs down on both, but we can. Have hey, it. I gave it three stars. Still, you gave it three. Yeah, it's I don't, yeah but that's that it. goofy book you have that nobody reads, goofy. and you change it anyway. So who cares? <laughs> I will say, in rewatching both of these again recently, though, I at least had fun with them. I didn't, I didn't sit through them and be like, "Oh my god, I hate this." I just was yes. like, yeah. "Eh, this has got its moments." I would have done it differently, but still, just to see these two horror, you know, monster franchises fighting each other, I, I, I enjoy it. But yeah, but these are both kind of messes, and that's you know, what are you gonna do? So, all right, there you have it, everybody. Three weeks of uh, Alien, Predator, and Alien versus Predator. So uh, let us know what you think of these two films down in the comments below, and uh, tune in for a really fun show next week. I will spill the beans on what that's going to be right now. So we're going to be doing something. I, we may not. It may not be the title in the video, but we're calling it Secret Satan. So everybody know this whole thing about like Secret Santa that uh, sometimes you do around the holidays where you get someone who uh, you don't know gives you a gift for the holidays, right? And you have to open up and guess who it came from. Well, we're kind of doing that here on the Monsters Den. So we're going to have the four of us as well as Dan Brown, Rich Catino, and Davey Gallagher. And we've all given each other uh, films to watch that we've never seen before, but uh, each of us don't know who actually gave us the film assignment. So uh George Lemie is going to kind of host this whole thing and keep us all in line. But uh, next week, we're each going to talk about uh, the film that we were given. So it's almost like a kind of like deviation of album homework assignment that we do here on the channel. Like George things. knows everything. He knows. George knows everything. Knows. George knows who gave everybody what and all that kind of stuff. So we're all going to come on here and we're each going to talk about our, our assigned film and what we thought of it. And then we're going to try and guess who we think gave us that film. So that's uh, coming up next week. That should be a lot of fun. So uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the all day time. time. For Jamie Laszlo, Chris Allo, Craig Kaminsky, I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you next week here on The Monsters 10. Till then, be safe. Bye-bye.